Um, my name is Chris Arnold, and on behalf of the Bob and Alicia Woodrick Diversity Learning Center here at GRCC, we welcome you to the campus of Grand Rapids Community College and really excited about honoring um, wonderful women today for our annual Salute to Women event. And I've, it's just really cool because there's so many people here that um, have been previous recipients and so many wonderful women, so welcome. So um, first, let's acknowledge our Board of Trustees who are here. We have Mr. Richard Verberg and Deb Bailey. And um, I know one of our former trustees, Terry Hanlon, is here as well. So um, there's been a lot of wonderful things happening throughout the city in honor of Women's History Month. And this is just a really great way for us to conclude, conclude the month. So again, we're, we're really um, happy to, um, to have this recognition. And I'd like to, to take a moment to thank our Women's History Month committee for their time and effort in making this a great event. Um, Jennifer Smith, Misty McClure Anderson. You see Misty over here. Um, Kathleen Owens and Noah DeSmith, Noah's from our media department. And really um, a special thank you to um, Jennifer Smith for, for all the coordinating behind the scenes work. And there's Jennifer right over there by the door. So thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> And um, let's just take a moment and recognize the previous recipients. Um, we have many uh, alumni recipients, students, and employees, and former employees. If you've received the Salute to Women Award, please stand. Thank you so much and, and congratulations to all the former recipients and really just congratulations to all the women present here today. So um, it is said that a strong woman is determined to do something that others should not think should not be done. The women we honor today reflect the resolve and purpose to move forward, challenging what others might see as obstacles. Their stories are varied as are all of ours and we believe illustrate the positive contribution of Grand Rapids Community College to their life success. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our Provost and Executive Vice President of Academic Affairs at Grand Rapids Community College, Dr. Lori Chesley. And Dr. Chesley will introduce our award recipients today. Thank you. Welcome to Grand Rapids Community College's Salute to Women event. This special day is one of GRCC's initiatives that celebrate not only diversity, the bringing together of people of different backgrounds, but also inclusion, the valuing of all people from all backgrounds. On this day, four women who embody personal and professional excellence are honored for their individual achievements and for representing the merit of all of the women at the college. Many people have shared that the goal of education is transformation, development, change, innovation for the better. Today we will meet and honor women who understand education to be a profound transformative power and who by their own character and actions, model that power. I am very proud to introduce them to you. Our first honoree, Patty Trepkowski, is receiving the Current Employee Salute to Women Award. Patty, would you come forward? Patty joined GRJC in 1978 as a head aide in the laboratory preschool. GRCC became home. She became the preschool director, a faculty member in child development, an assistant dean, a dean, an associate provost, and twice 
She has served as the interim provost at GRCC. There is almost no unit that Patty has not led at some point in her career. <laughs> in fact, her entire career has been a statement of her broad interest in the developmental stages of everything, from a four-year-old child to a 100-year-old institution. She recently wrote, one of the joys of development is the mutuality of it. Children help adults grow. Students help, uh, students help teachers. We help each other. All of this collective development contributes to the progress of individuals, institutions, and communities. With high spirits and with great integrity, Patty has truly helped so many of us, and I include myself, to develop and thus GRCC to progress. Congratulations, Patty Trepkowski, a woman of dedication and determination. Thank you, Laurie, for those kind words. I, I really am very, very grateful for this award. Um, it's an honor to be in the company of the women we are saluting today, Nikki and Mary and Sarah, and the women who have been recognized at this event over the years, and indeed all of the women who help GRCC do anything. Um, so I, I feel very, very happy for this. I've had the great pleasure of, of knowing and working with, with many people here, men and women, who have done wonderful things for this college. It is so critical that each of us has the opportunity to find her voice, to trust her own way of knowing and being in the world, and to connect with others to do good work. I've been so blessed by the many people who have loved and supported me through my life. First of all, I have my dear family. My mom and dad always loved my brothers and me for the people we were, the people we are. For all the time I remember, my parents were interested in what I thought about things, and they were willing to talk about anything. They taught us to be respectful to everyone and to not judge others. This built a strong sense of self, an ability to listen, an example of openness and fairness, and a deep confidence. My dad, my brother Ralph, and my Aunt Pauline are here today, and I'm so grateful to them and all of my family with whom I'm always at home. My friendships are an ongoing source of love, support, and fun. I'm so happy to share this moment with my friends because I don't know what I would do without them. The long conversations we have, the support through thick and thin, and the laughter I share with my friends. Here today are a good contingent of the Pinochle women, Val, <laughs> Melissa, Jean, Lucy, Margaret, Kathy, Maureen, Mary Ruth, Barbara, my book fr club friends, Diane and Rita and Leslie, or Lisa, and my longtime friend, Jamie. My friends are truly my life companions, and I am deeply grateful to them. And my dear work colleagues, you have been so critical to my growth and so supportive and inspiring to me. We've created together, solved problems together, learned together over these many years working for our students' success. I especially today want to recognize my mentors, Phyllis Fratsky, who hired me, and help me find my professional self. Till Peters is here today, who is my first dean and, and really was a great support as the Dean of Workforce Development. Don Boyer and Velvy Green, who gave me the opportunity to become an administrator and helped me learn so much about leadership. I've enjoyed so many teams and work with so many colleagues, child development and preschool, instructional support, our provost deans group, the all of the deans council, cabinet, curriculum operations, jet in and curriculum approval. We really know how to have fun. <laughs> all the faculty and staff with whom I've worked. The systems, projects, processes, policies, programs, and courses 
The good work we've done together is very satisfying to me. You are truly gifts in my life. One of the memories I want to share today is about a polarity exercise that we did years ago. I think Frank is here, and he was one of the people who put this together and led it. I thought of it on this occasion because the polarity we considered was masculinity and femininity. The point of the exercise is that we need a balance and need to work toward a mix of the positive qualities of each pole. The more masculine qualities of action, analysis, objectivity, logic, and the more feminine qualities of care, relationship, collaboration, and intuition. We also need to notice when we've gone too far one way or another, too aggressive or too passive, for instance. The cure is to move toward the other pole. So over-aggressiveness begs for listening with care to other people, and passivity begs for action. It is such a gift to live in a time when people are more and more free and welcome to bring their particular gifts to the table and be included in the work, the conversation, and the decisions. I'm grateful to GRCC for all the college's efforts over the years to make this real. Mary Catherine Bateson wrote, wisdom is born of the overlapping of lives the resonance between stories. I'm grateful for connecting with the lives and stories of so many good and gifted people and love the wisdom we create together. Thank you again for this award. I'd like to welcome Mary Brown to come up to the podium. Mary is being honored with the Salute to Women Former Employee Award, although we are very fortunate to still benefit from her wisdom as she continues to teach as an adjunct faculty member in the business and psychology departments. Along with our own Chris Arnold, Mary recently received recognition as one of the 50 most influential women in West Michigan by the Grand Rapids Business Journal. As a member of the Spectrum Health team and as an educator, Mary seeks to understand how, how organizations work and develop over time. She sees her own career choices and path as reflective of evolving inf information and experience. She says, I am interested in teaching and coaching and intrigued by the questions raised by the complexity of organizational culture. Congratulations, Mary Brown, a woman of reflection and concern. Congratulations. I'm give you your certificate. Can you see me behind this podium? I was, I was, I was so worried about that. Um, and uh, can I get? I'm, I need my glasses. I'm sorry. So I don't. Okay. Um, first, I'd like to thank everyone um, who came to celebrate these women here today, including myself. Um, I want to especially thank, um, in the 19 years of being here at Grand Rapids Community College, the dedication to the students, which I think is the reason why we're here, um, ultimately, in the work that we do. And um, I so appreciate being with the, such a stellar lineup. Uh, who would have known I would have been with this lady here? It's amazing. 
Um, <clears throat> so my tenure got me to thinking about gray hair. And <laughs> so I wanted to share with you some reflections on what I call navigating the gray, both the literal and physical manifestation of gray. And here's the thing. I thought because women often think about this because they often are trying to color their hair. And so now the, the new thing is to just let it grow and, you know, do this kind of cool look. So um, I'm actually being hip, as my students tell me. <laughs> so <clears throat> I remember the first patch of gray hair at 16 and how I made every effort to show that piece of hair off as a sign of wisdom. And it was that evidence of wisdom and maturity. And unlike other girls, it wasn't the formation of breasts that I lauded as an evidence of my maturity. It was that first gray hair. <laughs> and I learned that despite the lore of gray brought the maturity, it was indeed epigenetics and genetics in general uh, that I inherited and that created this phenomenon, not wisdom. Um, th and then I forgot that I was, I'm, I'm nearsighted, not farsighted. Um, so what I ultimately learned was that my wisdom would come about by exploring the gray areas of life and questioning what if everything I hold dear were not true. From social, religious, and political beliefs to beliefs of sexuality and love to questioning what is our human existence, this uh, gray area expressed um, doubt um, as, and it's helped me to challenge my sureness and what I thought was my reality and even my realness. Looking at living with the gray for me has been tolerating the once intolerable, meaning, ex uh, meaning I'm exploring the disdain or disgust to ask why I react in such a way and more deeply asking what does the behavior or existence of what I cannot tolerate mean, often from the other person's perspective. It has meant that I have had a vis when I have a visceral reaction to something um, that's foreign to me, that I dig deeply inside myself to understand the meaning of that reaction and why. It means seeing any uh, seeing the gray area of my, my being and knowing that I may harbor unpalatable ideas and behaviors and constructs and keeping hope that someone in kind will attempt to understand me. Um, it has meant that often I finish my thoughts or have rationale for something I've said that is not explicit to others. So I must begin my conversation with context. My colleagues can tell you this. I blurt out <laughs> things. So after this part of my life lesson, I give this advice to you. And who am I to give advice to all these people? But I'm going to give it to you anyway. <laughs> Enjoy the days and months ahead. Celebrate without impunity along with all aspects of this life. And that have allowed you to exist, and along with the privileges that have been both given and earned. In return, remember that others may not have such bestowed upon them. Their internal or external barriers in life may keep life treasures from them. Some people can go with you for the full journey. Others may stop and get off, and perhaps later they jump back on and join you. But recognize that some may not go for the full ride. And most of all, forever, surround yourself with authentic love, that manifestation appears in both words and deeds. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to thank you. i leave you with one quote, which um, is going to be characteristic to those who know me. And it's from Max Brooks, the author of the Zombie, Zombie Survival Guide, <laughs> a complete com, um, protection from the living dead. Um, survival is the key word to remember. Not victory, not conquest, just survival. Thank you so much, everyone, and appreciate the honor. Sarah Van Salkema is the recipient of the GRCC Salute to Women Student Award. Sarah, would you please come up to the podium? There is a quote that reads, 
the flower that blooms in adversity is the rarest and most beautiful of all. Sarah's courage is the thread that runs through her life story. Sarah has overcome many challenges, including personal loss, illness, and emotional violence to become a respected leader at GRCC, moving forward and reaching out to others even as she finds her own way. Sarah is committed to raising awareness about the complexity of social issues faced by the LGBTQ community. As president of GRCC's student group Standout, Sarah has the opportunity to influence and inspire many others. Sarah Van Salkema, a woman of resilience and insight. Sarah, please accept this award on our behalf. Sorry if I cough a lot while I'm up here, I'm trying to get over a bad cold. Before I start about me, I'd like to thank everyone for being <clears throat> here today and nominating me for this award. Usually I take my piercings out, but I figured fishing season isn't, isn't here yet, so I'd leave them in. <laughs> it is such a great pleasure to be here, <clears throat> and I cannot begin to even explain to you or explain for someone like me how honored I am to have been chosen for this award. I'm not used to recognition and such positive energy surrounding me. With that said, in my opinion, my lifelong goals and who I am reflect scholarship. This is a quote I use to describe the person I am today and for the future. Oops, sorry, I'm losing my place here. I owe a big thanks to Grand Rapids Community College for giving me a life that I thought never existed. I was not always an advocate and as outspoken as I have been in the last four years. In fact, I was the exact opposite. I started my life out with a dark past of self-harm, being ridiculed for who I was and who I was not. I've endured many losses in my lifetime so far, from my first love and her five-year-old son, just hours after my 19th birthday, she was killed by a drunk driver, to my mother recently this January from stage four uterine cancer. For a long time, I'd let things hold me back out of fear. I, <clears throat> I'd get picked apart or lose. My life changed in 2012 with my first class here at GRCC. Uh, it was PY97 with Antoinette Perko. She said, you have to get out of your own way with her introduction to the class. I've lived by those words from that moment on. So when I say Grand Rapids Community College has saved my life, I literally mean it. <clears throat> this institution has given me, given me a success in the classroom as well as in my own personal life. I think my friends and family could agree in the dramatic changes that I've made since I've been a student. Thanks to GRCC's wonderful advising and personal counseling from Sarah Rose and Whitney Harper, I've managed to be a success in classes, stay on top of my credits, and keep my life held together, which has allowed me to gain a diploma at the end of the semester when I graduate. I will be the first in my family to go to college and one of few to even complete high school on both sides. I want to also give Professor, or Professor Shanna Goff recognition for taking the time to understand me as a student on a personal level to help me identify many learning disabilities. Shanna helped me attain a grant to pay for a disability testing along with Sarah Rose, and also at this time apply for emergency assistance when I no longer had a place to live. Hugs from, excuse me, hugs from professors came in a time of compassion when they wanted to show how proud they were of me, or even when I was mourning over family issues and the loss of my mother. No matter my hardship, I've always had CC, GRCC in my corner. I've never had so much love and support around me like I have had in these past four years because of the person I have strived to be and the changes I've made for the better. This did not come without a lot of hard work and understanding from others. I've been in therapy 
and medicated since August 5th, 2008, a day I'll never forget, when I buried myself in self-loathing and fear by hiding with an attempted suicide. Giving up on healthy friendships and relationships in order to make better choices has also been a tough challenge. In 2012, going on disability to find myself was a long, hard decision, but with no regrets. No matter what happens, I've always landed on my feet, and I have been brought down some pretty unique paths in life. <clears throat> I'm proud to say my strength came from my mother through understanding, compassion, and integrity. My drive and relentlessness comes from my father, the hardest worker I know. The college and places like Pine Rest have given me skills and tools required to help me hone something that's always existed within me. With these traits, I've been able to be a student organization president for Standout, the LGBTQQA committee on campus, as well as an advocate for West Michigan's community being a mentor for the refugee program at the Gays and Faith Together organization and volunteering for the network of West Michigan, also known as the Pride Center. My peers and I have helped start a wave of transgender issues and compliances at the school through Standout. <clears throat> the build of unisex bathrooms, gathering student information on poverty to help bridge the gap for faculty and staff trying to aid in these issues and much more. Inspiring others to help them help themselves is what I live for and why being a social worker is just my, the perfect task for me in life. As I've inspired others, they have empowered me to start the process in creating my own new identity. I've gone from my given name, Sarah Elaine Van Salkema, to Bo Lane Van Salkema in just a matter of a few years with standout. Students and our active co-advisor, Simon Kittick. They have given me a strength while I go through this transition, transition to show myself to the world as I progress to help encourage others not to hide and be who they are, <clears throat> whoever that might be. The courageous individuals have shown me something so special that I could have not found anywhere else. I say this with great gratification. I am transgender, but will always remain my mother and father's Sarah, even though my new identity is different. As I go through this, Without hiding, my hope and dream is that I will start a ripple effect of change for the stigmas that surround some of the hardship I've endured personally. Not everyone with piercings and tattoos are drug addicts and alcoholics and uneducated. Not all LGBT members are emotionally and physically confused. Just like not everyone on disability is lazy and wants to lot, rely on it forever. Any more than all the heterosexuals being labeled as unwilling to understand something different other than their own sexual preference. With these words said today in this room, at this moment, I am sure I have affected someone's life in a positive way, which will make a better tomorrow. Again, I just want to thank all of you for being here, especially my support system and college employees I have personally invited to this event because without you, I wouldn't be standing up here this afternoon. So thank you. And let's give them all a round of applause. Our final honoree is Nikki Banks. Uh, as you probably know, Nikki Banks is the department head of our criminal justice area, and she is the current Excellence in Education Award winner for faculty. Today, she's in Denver, Colorado, attending the Academy of Criminal Justice Sciences annual meeting 
because her department is positioning itself for accreditation through that body. Nikki's mother, Mrs. Inez Smith, will accept on her behalf. Would you please come forward, Mrs. Smith? At a time when our criminal justice system is justifiably undergoing scrutiny across the country, Nikki Banks is an exceptional asset to both GRCC and the greater West Michigan community. She is knowledgeable in all aspects of the systems and processes that determine the justice that is actually available to people. She understands the biases and often unquestioned traditions within our systems that can obstruct true impartiality. With this knowledge, Nikki offers to her students an authentic look at the career path they are choosing and the significant influence they will have on individuals and the outcomes of difficult, potentially life-altering circumstances. Nikki knows that she must stay connected with the community and its current stresses and culture in order to continue to be an effective advocate and role model for her students and others. Congratulations, Nikki Banks, a woman of resolution and vitality, and we're lucky to have Nikki on video um, to speak with us today as well. To God be the glory for the things he has done and continues to do in my life. It is with pure joy that I say thank you to Grand Rapids Community College for this honor. You should know that my little sister Anika received the same award in 2011. And so for me to follow in her footsteps means that I must be on the right track. A charge to keep I have to be the difference that makes the difference. This charge was instilled in me by my parents, Bernard and Inez Smith, primarily by my mother. Because of you, Mom, I charge, I push, I pull, I grind, and I even know how to unwind. You have always demanded that I be the difference that makes the difference in all that I do. And you are the consummate teacher. You, you were and you always will be. As a woman, I have yet to see you face a barrier in life that you did not look directly in the eye and minimize through the power of Christ Jesus in your life and get on with it in life. And for those life lessons, I say thank you, for you have instilled those same qualities in me. That's my DNA. To the strong and beautiful hens that sit with my mother at the table, I say thank you for consistently and constantly breathing life into me. I have watched you uh, be powerful women. You have always instilled in me the purpose and power of sisterhood. So I say thank you for those life lessons as well and know that I am grateful to you all. To all of my sisters at Grand Rapids Community College, faculty, staff, and students, I see you and I salute you, especially Vicki Cooper. You are a model of excellence to me. A quick shout out to my big brother. Thank you for always praying for me. And finally, to my husband, Mac, you're the best I've seen. Thank you for always supporting me. And in regards to our children, one word, love. Thank you again, Grand Rapids Community College, Raider Nation. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Good afternoon to this wonderful gathering for the 18th annual Salute to Women. I stand here. I really didn't think I was going to react that way, but, you know, I heard some things that she said, I said, made a difference. So I am very grateful to stand here again and salute one of my children. You know, I, I sat at the table and I began to reflect back on Grand Rapids CC. I'm a mother with four kids. All four of them attended Grand Rapids CC. I have some good memories 
and I have some bad memories. <laughs> I'd like to talk a few minutes about some of these bad memories. <laughs> because as a mom, you know, you're trying to uh, drop these kids off at CC uh, mornings. Uh, you have to come back to pick them up. And the bad memories is somebody wasn't standing on the right corner where I see it to stand. <laughs> and I'm going all the way around this, this whole school trying to find the kid uh, who was supposed to be down by that library. <laughs> well, my good memories, very good memories, is I am so thankful I'm so thankful to this institution for my children going through here, and they got a very good education. Uh, I think my biggest worry most of the times, and, and they began to say, Mom, now look, we're in college, and uh, maybe you could let up a little bit. I said, well, Perhaps I could. When I see the end of this, when I see the graduation of this uh, task that you've taken on, then I'll let up a little bit. <laughs> but you know, I, I tried to train them. Uh, my husband and I told them, you know what? This is your life. We brought you this far. Now you've got to take it on and you have to start formulating uh, your education. How are you going to look at you know, what you're setting out to do? You've got to have this education because you can't stay here anymore. <laughs> but the other thing was you know, uh, just working with your children. And I know every parent has experienced this. If you got more than two, they're all going to be different. That's for sure. But I thank God, you know, that they were willing to listen uh, to what I had to say. And, of course, they had to listen to their dad. That was, you know, that was just a given. But I am glad that they took into consideration uh, the value of their education. I cannot stand here and say that I'm not proud of what Anika and Nikki has accomplished, but I also tell them, you know what? There is still much, much more that you have got to do. You're working with young people, and it is your job to instill in these young people, uh, uh, tell them that they, they're doing okay. If they, if they fall along the wayside, help to pick them up. That's what God put you here. That was what I did with my career as a teacher and as a, a trainee for college students. Um, I, I trained, I, I, I sometimes sit down and I think to myself, wonder where uh, all of those teachers that I had, uh, I had a part of making them into good teachers. I hope that they are doing well. I hope their lives are uh, happy and, and, and prosperous, and they are helping other young people, because in this world, I think the good Lord, you know, uh, blesses you when you get certain kinds of education to, to go out and do that. I also instill, I, you know, Nikki wrote something here, and I, I, I was trying, sitting there trying to remember I said this. She said, uh, um, I recall mom saying, if you had more education, you wouldn't have a problem. You could use that statement she said, I could use that statement to apply to any occasion. And I'm trying to figure out what was she talking about. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, somehow, all of these different things, they have gotten to them. And I can't be, I, you know, I, I, I didn't do this by myself. 
I, I want to say that. I, I want to point out right now, uh, first I want to point out a lot of young ladies. Uh, where are all of these young ladies that were my girls' friends? You've got to just, just come right here and stand because they've all been, Jennifer, you better move it. Um, <laughs> where is Shonda? Where is Lisa? Come on up. Uh, who else? These young girls, I, I want to give out a salute to them. They grew up with my girls. Jonesy, please hurry on up here. <laughs> Can you imagine uh, when I look around the room and I see these four uh, young women, young professional women who grew up with my girls and they, they have all done well for themselves. I thank God for that. Thank you guys. Thank you for just coming up. <laughs> uh, one other thing. Another thing that happened in our lives uh, with, with my husband and I, uh, growing these girls up, the, my boys and my girls up, I have a group, uh, two tables, of church members from St. Luke AME Zion Church. I would be remiss if I, if I could not ask them to stand. They watched my children grow up. They had parts in their lives and all of the rest of them. Uh, Miss Ms., Mrs. Granison uh, had formulated a group of women that were called, we're called hens. And we have tried to be the backbone to all of our children. Uh, that that has grown up and that's come through CC. I, I just can't say enough about uh, Grim Rapids CC. How much it has meant to to me and to my family. And I always told my children, you know, a mine is a terrible thing to waste. And I'm grateful that they listen and they're. They are carrying on in their lives what I so dearly tried to impart with them. And that was to say, you know, get out there. You have, you have to get a good education, and you have to share it with somebody else. Thank all of you so much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Smith. My, wow, my takeaway um, from today, and there are, there are many, but one of the major takeaways from today is that uplifting this great institution are some really great women. Please join me again in congratulating them. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. Kathy Mullins, the Executive Director of the GRCC Foundation, and she is going to talk with us a little bit about our Salute to Women scholarships. Kathy? Thank you, Lori, and thanks to everybody for coming today. It's an absolutely gorgeous day outside, and I can't tell you how wonderful it is to see a room full of people celebrating these four truly amazing, intelligent, and beautiful women. So thank you all for coming. One more round of applause for the ladies. So um, my role here at the college is donor relations, and I'm in charge of raising money for scholarships for our students here at GRCC. So you can all continue to make eye contact with me. It's okay. I'm not, I'm not going to 
you know, have my hand out as you walk out the door. Um, but I did want to say, um, first of all, thank you to Mrs. Smith because she teed up my um, remarks today beautifully. Um, what I'd like to do is just take a quick poll of the audience and I'd like to see by a raise of hands how many people in this room are GRCC alums or have taken classes or family member has taken classes. Now, how many of our people that are here in the room work at GRCC as faculty or staff or have retired from GRCC? Yesterday, I went to the doctor, and that's, I'm taking the pulse. I'm taking your pulse, pulse of this room today. And the student that was taking, or the nurse that was taking my pulse yesterday was a GRCC graduate. And what I found is every place I go in this community, I see the same reflection of, of the audience members and the number of people whose lives have been touched by Grand Rapids Community College. And as women, we know, as a first generation college student myself, I know that it was my education that raised me up and eventually raised my family up and my children are better because I was able to go to college. So I know that you all have stories like that. So when, what I need you to do for me to help me as we think about raising money for our students and getting our story out I need you to do three things. I need you to offer me your time, your talent, and your treasure. And when I say time, um, I ask that you do what Mrs. Smith did this morning, and, or this afternoon, and reflect a bit on how GRCC has impacted your life and how it has improved your life. And um, as you think about that, I would ask that you, as you take your talent out into this community and you interact with students that are potential students that would, could come to GRCC, I ask that you share that experience with these students so that these students can feel the confidence that you have in this institution and understanding that GRCC is a place where we wrap our arms around our students and we get them to the next level. Doesn't matter if it takes you two years, doesn't matter if, you take, if it takes you 12 years, we're here to take care of that. Um, so I need you to encourage people to come to GRCC. I need you to just share your story. Um, and as people see your talent and then they hear your story, they're, they're going to become, I'm asking you to be ambassadors for this institution so that people want to send students to GRCC, so that community members want to partner with us and that uh, the philanthropy that we have in this community continues for GRCC. So I ask that, and then um, I ask, of course, as donor relations for your treasure. And um, that is just exactly what it is. You know, it's as little as $10, it's as big as planned giving, you know, leave something in your estate. But um, as you think today about GRCC and how you can help students and maybe the impact that you've seen GRCC has had on these four ladies up here, think about the scholarship that we do have um, in, in honor of Salute to Women and think about donating to that scholarship. Um, I can assure you that 100% of every dollar that you give to GRCC for scholarships goes to scholarships. I, our students see every dollar of that and I know from the students that I interact with on a daily basis that those scholarship dollars for many of our students mean the difference between coming to school and not. So thank you again for coming today and remember when you're thinking about GRCC, you're thinking about your experience, remember this, think about your time, your talent and your treasure. And um, for those alums, welcome home, welcome back, and um, think about giving back to some of our students that are here today. Thank you. Um, just a couple housekeeping things. We would like all the recipients to remain. We'd like to get some group photos with you with your award, so if you could come up. And um, please, there's plenty of cake and, and um, refreshments left. Enjoy yourself and, and enjoy your conversations. And thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful afternoon. <laughs>